right, hi everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is where we are doing portfolio reviews. I'm going to keep it pretty short this week. Um, I do portfolio reviews on Wednesdays, um, and really I do them for me as a way to kind of record my investing, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Uh, probably the biggest part of my channel is financial education videos, which we, we release on Saturdays. So if you want to check those out, you can come back for that. Um, if you like this sort of video, smash that like button and subscribe. Um, as I go through this here on the screen, I think one of the things I wanted to talk about, obviously the market's been crazy rough, but just do a brief recap on some of my best dividend stocks. I thought that'd be interesting, something I haven't really talked about much in these portfolio reviews. Um, yeah, so if I go through here, I'm going to go through some of the ones that I hold that have been good for dividends. Um, this BEP is a company that's been good for me. Um, as I scroll down here, and they're a clean energy company, their dividend yield is north of three. Um, and just for dividend yield, I think I'm going to make a video upcoming here on exactly what dividends are, how they're calculated, all that stuff. It's not really the point of these videos that I do when I do my portfolio review, but I think something I'm going to do coming up. Um, and I kind of compare it to the benchmark. So when I look at SPY, which is a fund that I have, which tracks you know the s p 500 index i think that dividend yield is 1.46 somewhere in there about one and a half so really anything north of that i feel like are decent dividends um, and really what a dividend is even though i'm not going to go through crazy in depth of how to calculate it it's nothing more than a payment that the company pays you for holding on to that stock Right, so this BEP, this clean energy company, pays me quarterly, and the more money that I have invested in them, the higher the dividend payment is. So it's just a small payment that I get quarterly. And I actually have my dividend set up just to auto reinvest. It's called Drip. So every single time I get a payment, all it's going to do is buy more shares into that company because I can do it with fractional shares. But yeah, this company, you know, not only has it gone up decent in value period since I've held on to it, it's up 27%, which isn't bad seeing as the market's really been kind of tanking lately. But uh, yeah, it also pays a decent dividend. Um, as I go back to my portfolio, I'm just going to kind of scroll down through here. I know which companies pay me decent dividends. Uh, here's another clean energy company, the CWEN, this Clearway Energy. Um, when I scroll down here, they also pay 3.83. Um, this company, prior to all this crashing of the market, was actually doing pretty good for me. Now it's at a negative return. But again, I've gotten very decent dividends on my holdings here. Um, another company that I like specifically for the dividend. And again, I would say when looking at investing, right, I wouldn't buy a company just because its dividends are high. You know, an example that I give is ExxonMobil, right? They pay a pretty good dividend, but they're not in the clean energy. They're in the oil industry. And I think that that is starting to phase itself out. I don't think that we're going to be off of gas anytime soon, but I don't see a lot of growth coming out of a company like that. So if I don't believe in them as a company long term, I'm not going to buy them just because I can get a decent dividend. So these companies that I'm showing you are companies that I bought long term holds that I believe in, but also pay me good dividends. So let's see here. Keep going down. We got One Oak. So this dividend is extremely high, uh, 8.44, so really high dividend. As you can see here, you know, they do, they're in the natural gas industry. Um, but it's a company that I've seen a lot of good growth out of as well. And ever since the market tanked back with COVID, so I'm just going to go back and look at them over the last, well, I'll go five years. Right. If you look at how they were performing and how that was trending, their share price is was significantly higher with a lot of stable growth. Obviously, with COVID, it really tanked. But as you can see here, right, it is starting to come back. And I see it having a lot of upside to try and get back to where it was. So, you know, yes, I think they've got a really good dividend, but I also think there's a lot of good growth opportunity in a company like this. And that's why I'm in One Oak. So I'll go back to the portfolio here. 
probably one other one I want to go through. Well, maybe two. I'll click on Southern here. And their share price has been falling. And here actually you can see, which is interesting, right? So just kind of to put into perspective, I hold with them 426 bucks. That's going to equate out to a dividend payment from them of $4.46. So it's not these crazy payments, right? It's, it's fractions, it's percentage of what your total holdings are. But that's a payment that I'm going to get quarterly from them. And then once I get it, it's actually going to just reinvest it in. And their dividend yield is 4.48. So again, very stable. Um, and what I like about dividends is it allows me to kind of get paid through holding these stocks without me having to sell my shares. So for somebody like myself that's really looking for long-term value investing, I don't want to sell my positions. I want to hold on to my stocks for long periods of time. Seeing those constant payments if I wanted, maybe I could use that as something to spend versus having to sell off my shares. I really try to stay away from selling my positions if I can. If I can. Um, and then the last one that I want to go over, I was just thinking about this. Even though a lot of the stocks here in my portfolio are all focused on dividends, they're not all as high as what these I'm showing you. I'm going to go through this O. It's actually a REIT, which means it's invested in real estate. Um, if I go down here as well, this dividend is 465 so again, another high holding um, with real estate investing. And kind of what I like about REITs is it allows you to start investing in real estate with a very small number, right? So if you don't want to own a rental and deal with all that or flipping houses, that takes a lot of capital to get involved. But you'd like to involve yourself in the real estate market. There are stocks and holdings that you can get out there that get you into real estate. And you can do it for fractional shares. Right, so here I've only got $330 invested in this company, so it's a lot smaller than buying a rental or buying property, but it still gets you exposure to diversify in uh, real estate. And then if we go back to the portfolio, that's really kind of my top dividend stocks. Um, just kind of looking at where performance is, right, over the last day, it was pretty flat, didn't make much, didn't lose much. This is where things get a little bit ugly. If I go to the last week, we're down 997 bucks, so almost a thousand bucks. Go into the last month, we're also down 762. Get into the last three months, and hey, we're finally back into the green. We're up $1,800, and then lifetime again. And we started this about July of last year, early July. We're still up 3,171 bucks. So what I really want to stress here, and I'm going to do it in this all-time graph, right, is do not freak out and panic when the market does bad, right? If you're an investor, you're in it for the long term. Don't do it to try and make a quick buck. Maybe I'm trying to tell you guys this. Maybe it's just when I watch my video, I'm trying to tell myself this. But as you can see here, right, we've had some significant dips. If I look, October 26th, right, up 7.3%. Literally just a couple days later, we were into the negative, right? If I look here, January 26th, we're up 26%. Just a couple days later, we're down to 19.2, right? So the market goes up, the market goes down. But as you can see here, even in my lifetime, which has been short since I've been in Robinhood, right? I still have decent gains. And even though the market's been doing pretty poor since February 9th, you can see I've lost quite a bit of money here on these dips. I'm still continuing to buy because I'm investing for the long term. This isn't short term. But yeah, that's really my portfolio review for the week. Um, if you guys have any questions, topics that you want to recommend, anything like that, post them in the comments section below. Um, if you like these videos, like I said earlier, uh, hit that like button and smash subscribe. Um, if not, I'll see you guys back here next Wednesday for another portfolio review or Saturdays for financial education. Thanks for watching.